thanks for joining us. I'm Maria Soraya. We are here today in Long Beach for the Long Beach Grand Prix, where the very best drivers in the IndyCar series come to compete at, of course, the highest level. Now, I had a chance to sit down today with Team Penske drivers, Elio Castro Nevis, Will Power, and AJ Amendinger, who all talk candidly about what it's going to take to get Team Penske back to the championship. This field's so competitive now, if you're off a little bit, you're back, like we were 13th, so um, it's great for the series, seriously, I mean, there's 20 guys in the field, or more than 20 actually, I would say pretty much everyone is capable of winning a race, so uh, great product for the fans to watch. Something I wanted to talk to you guys about is, you know, you, you're with one of the big three, you know, you're with Penske, and a lot of people will say, you know, you can't really win a series anymore unless you're with Penske, Ganassi, Andretti Autosport. So when you think about that, what kind of information do you share that makes that so vital? Look, at the end of the day, these teams like Penske, Ganassi, Andretti, I mean, it's it's resources. And, you know, they can get the best drivers, uh, they can do the best research, so they have the best equipment, they, you know, they abs absolutely maximize everything. Although, the current rules make it very difficult to break away from the pack. There is not really anything apart from dampers that are open. So, and you know, I think everyone's kind of right there on dampers as well anyway. So it comes down to getting the most out of uh, every session from the information from your teammates and um, you know, really come down to driving well. Uh, and that's how it should be. I think it's, I think the series is really strong right now. I know the setup here in Long Beach is, is a little tougher than most as well. The the track the track is very tough. Uh, the bumps and it's just a it's just a, it's a great setting. It's a great circuit. It's difficult and you know I think I think any driver that enjoys the technical aspect of driving loves driving here. It's funny they took us out for a ride a couple weeks ago on the track and I, that's when you really understand what you go through because you don't realize the bumps how different it is from being on an oval or a permanent street or ra ro road course. Yeah, I mean, that's right. Uh, I don't think people realize how bad the bumps are when you're sitting that far off the ground, exactly. you know, and you feel every single thing with your backside. Um, yeah, that, that can, be, uh, can be jarring, but I mean, if you get the car to work over the bumps, you know, you can gain a little bit of time there. And uh, it's all a part of, uh, I think, racing Indy cars, rough tracks, pretty cool circuits like this uh, you know it's a whole mixture I mean you race on really smooth road courses so uh, uh, that is the fun of IndyCar. You know competition in Indy series now is so much different obviously I'm sure compared to when you were here before too in kart. Yeah I mean when I when I used to race champ car I mean the two series were split at that time right. so you know I, I, I like to have think you know we had six or seven of the best in our series and there were six of this or seven in the best in the IRL series at that point uh, and once they merged it's uh, it's brought all the best guys together, together and I feel like, uh, you know, obviously this is my first time back seven years, but I've watched the IndyCar series the past several years, and I feel like uh, last year and, and this year, the competition's closer than it's ever been. Right. And, uh, you know, from, from one to 27, it's there's not a lot of time difference. So it, it it's fun as a driver because it makes every little inch on the racetrack, every mark so critical to hit for that one lap. Uh, but at the same point, when you don't hit it, it's so frustrating because it's not like you lose one or two spots. You lose like 10. Yeah. Is it a little surreal for you to be back here again? Yeah, it took me uh, 25 minutes from my, from my hotel room, which <laughs> unfortunately is inside the racetrack, to find out how to get back here. I had it down. and uh, so Welcome to Long Beach, yeah, right? Exactly. At one point, I was stuck between two fences. I don't even know how I got in between. I didn't know how to get out. So um, it, it, it's, it's cool to be back. It's, it was always one of my favorite races to go to. And, uh, to be a part of and uh, to be back here, it's it's fun to, to have that opportunity and have Roger give me that chance, uh, but it's also a challenge because I, I don't really want to waste anybody's time. I don't want to just be back to be back. I want to be competitive and, and run up front. and. Uh, so I, I put a lot of pressure on myself for it. Roger's pretty good about picking uh, picking his drivers, so I don't think you have to worry about that. I hope so. It's uh, you know, and it's you now I think the biggest thing is just trying to make people understand like it, this series. It, it, it's got some of the best drivers in the world in it, and sometimes it doesn't get the recognition of that it deserves. You know, the marketing side of it and getting it on TV more. Uh, you know, I, I wish it could that it could just keep building. It is slowly, but 
uh, to, to keep having it build and, and really show that this series is absolutely amazing. We go to some amazing cities, we drive some great race cars, the competition level from 1 to 27, the men and women that drive in this series are just uh, some of the best in the world. So uh, it, it's it's a challenge, it's fun, but like I said, I, I, I enjoy the opportunity to come do this, but I just don't want to waste anybody's time. I want to be at my best. I think what makes this series so unique is the fact that, you know, one week, last week we were on one of the fastest road courses, permanent road courses there is. Uh, this week we're on one of the toughest street course races there will be out. Uh, and then in a couple of weeks we'll be at Indy, the fastest oval around. So it just, you know, having to, to be diverse in, in learning how to drive each course, uh, it makes it makes the drivers, that's why I say some of the best in the world. So. Uh, but it, it's it's fun to be here. You know, we we're talking a little bit about uh, teams that have multiple drivers. You know, and of course, you know, Andretti, Penske, Ganassi, always in the top level as far as championships. Is it possible to even get a championship as a driver without having the extra support of a team? It, it's it's tough. It, you know, and and I think it, it's not just tough in IndyCar racing. I think if you look throughout throughout in NASCAR and in right. sports car racing. You, it's really hard to see that one car succeed just because, you know, especially at a place like this, you don't have a lot of time on the racetrack. So, you know, I can go try things or Elio can go try things or Will can go try things that we don't necessarily all have to try and we can come back and give that information and feed it back to each other. And it's just, and it's what makes having fast teammates so critical. And I think that's, for me, I put a lot of pressure on myself because I want to come in and try to help these guys in the championship. And, and I don't want to just have them always trying to help me. So. Uh, it's this day and age with the technology, with the information that gets fed back into the race team uh, through computers, through data. It's really tough to have one car succeed. I think. You know, it is. And then you know, you look around, you see the other drivers that are in your team, and you know, again, sharing the knowledge has to be so valuable for everybody, whether it's engineers, drivers, whomever. Yeah, and I think that's what it, it's not just important for the drivers, but I think it's important as a whole organization and that's what Penske is so good at between the cup and the IndyCar side of it is there's no information being hidden from engineer to engineer you know it's all out there it's on the computers we all sit in the same room they all talk to each other the drivers talk to each other the drivers talk to the other engineers so I, I it's just it's critical because yeah in the end you want to beat your teammate you know that's what you're put up against uh, in the organization is is you against your teammates but uh, you don't want to beat your teammate running 18th or 19th no. because you both just, or all three of you get fired doing that. So uh, it's, it makes it fun and, and I think that's where the chemistry of, of good teammates, good engineers, everybody as a team, is, it's so critical. And I think that's why you can't just have that one team and you can't have a multi-car team that separate each other from each no. other. It, it's, so it's, it's, it's critical. It's, it's truly a team sport. When does that moment go off, like you just said, that you're out there to win the race. When does it go off when you're driving so that you're in the front, you're the leader, even though you might help a teammate from time to time, but you're, you're out there to win? Yeah, and it's, I mean, it, like I said, it, it, it it's like, it, it's funny because it's a huge team sport. <laughs> right, right. And then all of a sudden we get out there and we're like, screw the team, <laughs> you know, we're going to win, we want to win. But, uh, it, but like I said, it's, you want, you do, you race your teammates differently, you try to help them out. Uh, and it's it's critical to you know the ultimate goal is yeah you want to be on the top step of the podium, but you want your teammates two and three, and that's and that's the way it is. And and you know if you don't work together, none of you are really going to get there. And that's and that's what uh, that's what makes it so much fun. Uh, and it, it makes being inside like an organization like Penske so exciting for me just because uh, that that chemistry is there. Is Elio taught you how to dance yet? Is he working? On Elio, he's he's got a little bit of dancing skills, you know. I got my other moves, you know. He can do the tango. I can do the grind. There you uh, go. You're sharing information once again. Will keep thinking he can. He he thinks he can rap and 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 rap just like I, I don't know what he really thinks he does when you it comes know, to dancing. Guys from down under, they're yeah, a little they bit do it, different. They do it, they do it differently. Uh, but it it's it, it's a fun group to be around. They. Will and Elio especially have really welcomed me in with open arms and, and helped me out. So uh, we, we have a good time and then, you know, we get serious when it's time. But um, I, I got better skills than Elio at certain kind of dancing. I won't say dancing with the stars dancing. I can go make it happen, but That's it. you never know. You never know. You might get that phone call. Never know. And uh, 
you know, I'm looking for a permanent job, so, you know, I'll try anything. We're here with Elio Castroneves. Now, I just want you to know that AJ said that he might be able to show you some moves on the dance floor, Elio. I'm like, really? This is interesting. I, uh, I'm ready. I actually want to see, too. Good. <laughs> AJ, please. I mean, I want to see what you can do. That would be awesome. I mean, uh, there are two, two things. Okay. Or he's going to do extremely good, yes. or we're going to have a great laugh. So it's one of those. So Either way, it's really a win-win, right? It's a win-win scenario. So um, we're waiting, AJ. It's up to you now. <laughs> Setup is so crucially important, and I know for this track, it's trickier than most. You know, people don't realize that uh, we're talking about, even though we come in here all, so many years, it changed. The car changed, the tire changed, and sometimes the setup from last year, when you put it in, it's not the same from uh, for this year. And you're like, wow, how could this be possible? But sometimes it's outside of our control. but. Uh, and that's why you have so many engineers, so many data, so that when you look back, all right, we have another se uh, session so we can try things. I hope it's going to... Plus, the, check, the, the track changed during the, the day, so it's a, it's, a, it's a tricky thing. It's a little warm out here this weekend. Is that better for you? Or? Normally, when it's warmer, it's, uh, it's, it's tougher because it's less downforce. It's more slippery, um, but that's what the fun... That's where is the fun. That's what makes it fun. You know, when you when you look at the big three, as they call them, you know, Andretti, Penske, Ganassi, it seems like having teammates helps you as a driver, maybe not when you're out in the truck looking for the win, but when you're off the track sharing information. Talk about that. Well, because we have such a limited uh, time uh, and sessions, you know, when you have a three different cars, for example, uh, or three different drivers in, in the same team, you can actually try little bits in one car and another. And if it works for that guy, not always it works for you, but um, at least it shows a direction. And uh, that's why it's important to have teammates. Especially for the engineers. I mean, it's not just one engineer here, it's several engineers here. They can brainstorm, you know, okay, I'll try this, or you try that, or we try the same thing and see what's happened. So it's always important. You've been here quite a few years. How do you feel that you're sort of progressing and maturing over all these years, Elio? I guess in life you um, you uh, you learn. I'm still learning. Don't get me wrong. Uh, certainly, but uh, every time you come to a place, um, you you enjoy the the thing that I'm still young inside. I still love what I do. This is like the air that I breathe, Absolutely. you know. And uh, and as long as I have that kind of a uh, uh, desire. Uh, it, it's going to continue to help me uh, to push to the limit, and um, I still have a lot to go. What's it like having AJ here now, having a t new teammate? It's great, great atmosphere. AJ is a fun guy. I mean, uh, sometimes we are in a sports that uh, it's a lot of you know bad things and actually good things because um, it's up and down all the time. But when you have him uh, um, among us and uh, kind of like having fun, which that's what it's all about, you know, you got to have a little, loosen up a little bit, having fun, and he, he brings that kind of thing, so it's uh, it's great to have him here. He said he doesn't want to disappoint Roger, I said, I don't think Roger would have you here unless he, he felt good about it. You <laughs> nail, absolutely, uh, I don't think he disappointed, uh, Roger, uh, it's a man that, uh, first of all, it's an amazing human being, and uh, he knows where the talent, and uh, that's why he's here. What kind of things does Roger talk about with you from time to time, that you sort of draw from well what I admire most in Roger it's um, he loves the same thing I lo that I love which is racing right. you know he is the most powerful man I know and um, he could be enjoying golf or uh, you know playing something else but he is every weekend if he's not here it's with any car and he loves it and for me that's what defines him and that's why the teams uh, uh, rep want to represent him so well. So for me, that's uh, 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 every time you say, I just love it, it, it feels the same way that, that I feel. Now, one of our IndyCar drivers here in Long Beach is also a huge Dodger fan, and he had the thrill of his life throwing out the very first pitch at Chavez Ravine. All right, we are here with Charlie Kimball at the Long Beach Grand Prix. Now, we're going to talk about racing, but first, you threw out the first pitch at Dodger Stadium. Talk about that, you're a lifelong Dodger fan. The first baseball game I ever went to was at Chavez Ravine in Dodger Stadium. So to be able to to be a part of a Dodger game like that, I, I feel lucky if I can catch a Dodger game when I'm back on the West Coast. So to be able to, to be a part of it, throw the pitch out, meet legends like Don Mattingly, you know, I got to shake Matt Kemp's hand, Andre Ethier, even got to meet Vin Scully. And 
true legend. Just talking to him was like listening to a radio broadcast. So it was one of the coolest things I've ever done outside of a racetrack. Now, what was it like to walk on the field at Dodger Stadium? Because that's also a moment. Uh, it's, it's surreal. It is. Um, you know, it's so special and, and it's so iconic to me. Growing up, it's, you know, the beach, the mountains, Dodger Stadium, downtown LA, you know, now Staples Center, before the Forum. It, there's just such sports institutions for California. And, and being from here, especially when I was racing in Europe, it was the perfect way to relate to home. Now, do you wear the shirt, or is it now you're is it going with your name on the back, or do you keep it? In a, in a glass case somewhere. You know, I was having this conversation uh, after I got it, and, and I think, I think it's one I'll probably wear. Um, you know, I, I can always, you know, it's it's special, and I will take care of it. Yeah. You know, I'm not gonna wear it while I'm gardening, <laughs> but but every time I put it on, you know, I'll probably wear it on opening day when I'm watching, you know, the Dodgers play in Indiana um, at home, and so it's. It's a great way to remember that night and how special it was and, and the opportunities that I've had through racing. Because wi without being an IndyCar driver, I, I don't know that I would have gotten that chance. And so I'm very grateful for that. Now that you've had a little bit of time under your belt in IndyCar, I want to talk about the fact that you brought so much awareness to diabetes research, people living with it. But this is your, you're really into IndyCar now. You've seen all the tracks. So what have you gained in knowledge? Because six and points is pretty good, Charlie. Yeah, we've had a good start to the season. You know, I'm not a rookie or a sophomore anymore. This year, it's not a new car. Last year, it was. It's not a new engine package. You know, we're working really well as a team. We've got the tools we need. Our partners are, are working really well with us, and so we're able to, to build some momentum. You know, the, the challenge is we've had a good start. We need to keep that going. So it, it's almost about forgetting how good it's gone so far and focusing on what we've learned and, and using that momentum into these next few races. I know the setup for Long Beach is always probably very challenging for all the drivers because the terrain changes and you know it's it's not a lot, not an oval, you're definitely moving around. Yeah, I love the street circuits. It's as much for the event as for the racetrack itself. You know, the Long Beach Grand Prix is just a great event overall. From the fans to the street parties at night to to the, the excitement in the Lifestyle Expo, to all the different elements that, that the Grand Prix Association puts on. So to come out here and race, I mean, the racetrack is a lot of fun as well. You can pass, it's got a long front straight. I mean, there's nothing like blasting down Shoreline Drive at 180 miles an hour. It's very cool because there's so many fans here, second only to Indianapolis. So uh, a lot of Charlie Kimball fans, of course, coming out this weekend. Yeah, we, we always have a lot of friends and family, and, and it adds an element for me because I need to make sure that I, I put the effort and the energy into doing my job, you know, and driving the race car, which is why we're here. Um, but it's also nice to see friends and family because living in Indiana now, I don't get to see them nearly as much. And I've got a, a close group of friends I went to high school with, and we're kind of spread across the country now. So sometimes I'll see them here, sometimes I'll see them in Indiana, sometimes I'll see them at different races. But, you know, to be out here and meet re-meet some of the, the, the fans I've made, especially a couple with diabetes. You know, a young boy also named Charlie. You know, met him a couple years ago, recently diagnosed, and every year he comes out and says hi. And it reminds me why the Race with Insulin program is so important. That with a good or bad day on the racetrack, the fact that I'm out there competing is a win for so many people. It really is, and, and I was telling Lauren this earlier, that you know we had such a huge response the first time I interviewed you from so many people that had written in, sent emails, and said, you know, thank you for showing us the hope, and people don't think people can be healthy living with diabetes. Yeah, there's, I'm a living example that diabetes doesn't have to slow you down. And I think the tools, the management techniques, the information has come so far. I mean, my, my Novolog Flex Pen that I take my insulin with is, when the nurse first handed it to me, I thought she wanted an autograph because I thought it was a Sharpie. And so now, you know, with my on-the-go lifestyle, it's pretty hectic in the IndyCar season. You know, you have to find tools that work in your lifestyle. Um, and that's something that the Flex Pen does for me, and, and the team's been really good. Uh, not just the crew members, but my teammates, the support they've shown. You know, this Race With Insulin program was across all of Chip Ganassi racing teams for the month of April. So Grand Am, NASCAR, IndyCar, to see that support from my teammates meant a lot to me.
how is your health? My health's fine, everything's going really well. You know, I, I worked really hard over the winter on building some extra strength because uh, I was surprised by how physical this new Indy car is. The new DW12 at, at Barber Motorsports Park in Alabama, we saw lateral G loads of over four and a half Gs every lap. So to, to hold on to the car without power steering, without power brakes, we had to build a little extra strength over the winter, and, and it went well. I, I worked on my nutrition a little bit, and you know I'm feeling good heading into the year. You know, you're a part of the Ganassi family, and it, it, because of that, you share information with other drivers. You sort of have a brotherhood, and even though you're all out there racing to win the race, talk about the advantages that that has. Well, racing's unique in that it's an individual sport, but it's also a team sport. Without great teammates like Scott Dixon, Dario Franchitti, you know, in the target Chip Ganassi side, you're never going to have any success because we work together. We go three different directions, engineering, setup, driving, all those sorts of things, and then come back together, talk, figure out what works, and put the best of all worlds on the car for each driver. Um, and we have a good relationship and, and it's something that's building. I'm still very inexperienced compared to them. You know, they have they have a few more years under their belt. Dario's old, so you actually, you know, just we'll let him know that later, so he'll help you out a little I, bit. I was simply saying he was more experienced and more mature than I am. That that was all. Uh, no, they're really good guys and they've been great, you know, helping me. And they, they joke that they've taught me everything I know, not everything they know. So, uh, you know, we're Hopefully I'm able to contribute back to the program and we're able to, to build some good results together. Because as far as Chip's concerned, if we finish one, two, three, that's a win. He's a happy guy. No matter who's first, second, or third. Now one of the most popular support races here in Long Beach is of course the Celebrity Race. This year I caught up with Jesse Metcalf, Andy Bell, and Dave Passant who are all ready to race for kids. All right, we're here with Jesse Metcalf, a.k.a. Christopher Ewing. You've had a little bit of experience in the car, you know? I have, I have. As part of my storyline on Dallas, Christopher kind of develops this methane-powered stock car and, uh, you know, kind of gets involved in NASCAR. And, and because of that, I got a day's worth of training over at Texas Motor Speedway. Ended up going 130 around the track at the end of that day by myself. So, uh, you know, I think I kind of caught the uh, the racing bug, the racing bug there. Is that the first time you had ever been in a car? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Something you always wanted to do, or? Well, you know, I, I grew up riding motorcycles, and uh, you know, I, I'm a bit of a thrill seeker. You know, into kind of skydiving and bungee jumping, snowboarding. So it seemed kind of like a natural uh, progression. I'm sure the producers love that, right? <laughs> yeah, no, not so much. Not so much. <laughs> you know, we had just talked to um, some of the people that actually trained you guys at the driving school. What was that experience like? Oh, it was a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, the, the, the trainers over at, uh, at, at Toyota were... They were they were incredible. I mean, yeah, no, the whole I mean, you know, the the whole Willow Springs experience, you know, for me was was it was pretty tough because I was shooting in Dallas at the time, so I had to, you know, fly 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 into LAX, drive an hour and a half out to Willow Springs, you know, drive an hour and a half back, fly back to Dallas, and be ready to shoot at 6 a.m. on Monday. But honestly, it was all worth it. It's really been an incredible experience. What was the best advice that you've been given so far? <laughs> oh, wow, I mean, there's. <laughs> There's been there's been so much advice and uh, you know technical information disseminated, but I, I would I would probably say that uh, you know you know racing racing's a very a very technical sport you know and it's about it's about staying relaxed in the car and and executing. Um, you know these turns in the in the best fashion possible to get the best exit speed. You know, and I, you know, for for a guy who who like you know kind of grew up playing a lot of sports and stuff, it's not it's not really about willing the car to do what you want it to do because it, th then you'll tend to overdrive the car. It's 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 really about you know staying settled in the car and and executing the technical aspect of racing. Of course, all great for charity for the kids, which is important. Oh, absolutely. I mean, we got to visit the Miller's Children's Hospital yesterday. Unbelievable experience. The kids were great. I mean, I looked at some of the pictures that they took while we were there, and it, it kind of looked like we were having more fun than the kids. You know, we ended up uh, dressing up in a bunch of costumes. Andy Bell threw on a Superman suit. He looked absolutely ridiculous. But I'm, I'm crazy, you know. I'm, Andy Bell is crazy. I'm sure the kids loved it. So uh, that that was amazing. And uh, you know, I'm. I'm 
racing in the qualifying today for uh, for UNICEF. So if I'm if I'm able to snag the pole position, People Magazine is going to give 15k to UNICEF. So it's amazing. Well, we're here with Andy Bell now. Extreme sport is very challenging, but so is this racetrack, Andy. Yeah, I've got some butterflies going on in my stomach right now. We haven't got out of the track yet today. Um, it's been over a week now, yeah. so trying to remember everything we learned out there and get through practice in one piece. Now, how do you best prepare yourself? What do you kind of psych yourself out before this, before you get in the car? I think for me, I'm just trying to remember to do the things that I'm not good at, and that's be smooth. I know that's kind of weird that I'm not good at being smooth, but yeah, need to be smooth, take my time, don't push too hard, because these cars, the more you push these cars, the slower you go, the smoother you are, the faster you go. So just try to repeat that in my head as I go around the track. You know, what was it like when you were out there? Last week we talked to you when you guys were practicing out there, and you had some semi-professional race car drivers taking us for rides, and we sort of saw them going around, and what was that? How did you navigate that? Yeah, it's, you know, you when you're on the racetrack, you never know what's going to happen, so you have to have eyes kind of everywhere, your mirrors in front of you all around, and there's going to be some carnage out there today and tomorrow, hopefully tomorrow, just tomorrow. Um, so you got to be paying attention. You never know what's going to happen. It's a race course. Who's the craziest guy out here right now? N number one for sure, Dakota Meyer. I mean, he is out of control. Love the guy. Oh, speaking of, there he is right there. Look at him, there. I was just saying your name. I was just saying oh, your no. name. Are you, are you the cra <laughs> You're the craziest guy out there, he said. Is that right? Oh, no, no. Have you seen every picture I see of Andy? He's upside down like 90 feet on a, like a big wheel or something. Right. I mean, or a rocket strapped to him. And I'm the crazy guy. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> well, e extreme sports or not, there's a lot of skill that goes into this. Do you have an edge because you're, you're already in this in this industry a little bit. Well, I'd like to pretend so, but uh, I mean, the guys I'm going against, Adam Carolla races cars every weekend, he does. and um, Tyler Clary has done a bunch of um, uh, schooling and stuff, so it's not like, I'm definitely not a shoe in here, and uh, I'm going to try my best, it's going to be fun. Regardless, it's going to be amazing. Okay, now what number are you? I'm number 20. Okay. Watch for me, hopefully in the front. Number 20. Now, just to give you a little FYI, Dave Passant said that you know he's done this five times now, and that he's the guy to beat. Well, that's what he's told me too, but uh, I guess they're just going to see. There's some actually really fast guys in uh, just on the celebrity side. I think there's four or five. Mark Steins is fast. Michael Truco is fast. Dave's fast. I think they're trying it's, to psych you out though, right? Hey, you know what? I can take it. Look at me. Do I look scared? Absolutely not. <laughs> this is my fifth year doing this, uh, and my wife actually did it one year. So this is uh, this is quite a, been quite an event meaningful because it is for the charities racing for kids which goes to the Miller's Children's Hospital in both Long Beach and Orange County so it's a it's a great event it's a fun event and obviously goes to a the worthy cause. Now, was this a dream of yours to drive an race car or how did this come about? Well I've been associated with the Grand Prix Association for a while I was one of the uh, uh, partners in the Del Mar race when they ran the IMSA races down there and so I've been around this thing for a long long time and it just was one of those things where it just came up the first time and it was so much fun I had to do it a second time and then suddenly it was a third time and here I am back for a fifth time. Now, do you find yourself getting better and better as each year progresses? Actually yes, uh, even though I'm getting older and uh, heavier but the bottom line is, is uh, you improve your skills, you improve your, your uh, how to handle the car so every year I actually have gotten better and better and better and so uh, you know I really uh, Guys are telling me I actually have a shot this year. So, now you're a local guy. This is right in your own backyard. What is that like for you? It's wonderful. I lived so many years in Palos Verdes and Rolling Hills, and and you know it's great to be able to be involved in a world-class event that's literally in your own backyard. It's amazing. Now, did you ever come to this race and watch it? Yeah, absolutely. I started here uh, back. I missed the very first year when it was a Formula 5000 race, but was here all through the Formula One years, and then I missed one or two of the Indy years, but I've basically been here ever since. Well, that will do it for us from the Long Beach Grand Prix. As you can see around me, some of the most beautiful views anywhere ever, which is why race car drivers like to come here. I'm Maria Soreo, and we'll see you next time. What's up? This is Andy Bell. This is Digital Mobstar. Hi, James.